Oh my goodness, look how awesome that Jeep is. Let's take a look around. This is our buddy Jason. He's got this, I believe it's a 2016 or 2015 four-door JK. He's done most of the armor package himself um, at home. So he's got overline fenders front and rear, metal cloak body armor, VKS pre-runner sliders that have been welded on. And then of course the rear corners, flares, and that same XO corner crawler kit with the LED tail lights. So he already had this rear bumper on, he installed that at his house as well. Here's the goodies. So this one has the Nemesis uh, EVAP relocation kit. And we have a whoo, ballistic shaved 14 bolt with the Artec Apex truss. So this is their new truss design. Uh, you get the top hat and the two sides with the coil mounts. And then that keys into these upper control arm mounts. These are Barnes four inch bump stop extensions. Uh, this has the, the Evo long arm that was added on this trip. So really flush mounted frame brackets, thick, strong arms with Johnny joints. And then this lower mount that doesn't really hang down too far past the axle. So this one also, since it does not have the Evo lever system in it, uh, we bought some shock mounts. These are, I believe those are just Rusty's quarter inch shock mounts with a Genrite sway bar. Um, sway bar mounts are welded to those shock mounts, welded to the axle. And that's a Genrite sway bar. The mounts for the sway bar have been welded in place. The bumper had to be chopped and Jesse welded that thing to the frame as well. So none of this stuff should move, should be really strong. Now you can see right here, the speed sensor set up, the original backing plate has been ground out for that speed sensor to read correctly off of those tone rings. This is the Artec 52 tooth tone ring kit. And those are also the Artec sensor mount. So that little bracket that is sandwiched behind those nuts is from Artec as well. This one has ballistic uh, wheel spacers so that it matches the front track width. So he's got a roughly 72 inch wide axle set here. Currently that is the stock track bar. Um, the Synergy track bar we ordered was back ordered so it should be here anytime and we'll swap that out. Exhaust, uh, had to cut it off and then put it back on, wrapped it with some wrap here where it runs near these ARB hoses or the ARB hose right here and then the vent line. So wrap the exhaust so there wouldn't be any risk of uh, damage there. These are four and a half inch metal cloak uh, dual rate springs. Basically that's just a rate that's collapsed at ride height and it just keeps the spring from unseating when off road. And again, that was the Barnes four inch bump stop extensions. New hub, bearings, rotors, etc. See how the Evo long arm mounts the frame. Uh, these brackets get welded in. Now, originally the VKS slider for the pre-runner had an arm that came out and went to the frame back in here. Jesse cut that off, built a new leg for it here. So it still has the three legs, very similar to their uh, VKS standard sliders. This is just the pre-runner style. So it's got the dimple dyed plates and then a little step to help you get in the vehicle. Uh, 38 gear set, an ARB locker, uh, Yukon cut to length shafts. That's an Artec pinion guard with a 1350 thick wall Knoxville driveline shaft. And of course there's a 1350 flange on the front and the rear of the transfer case. You can see the front flange there. Make sure you trim for the shifter there's a little shifter tab up here that has a little piece of metal. We always trim that off to give CV clearance. This one had a lift along, uh, we put on several years ago. So it's got the AFE Y pipe where the Y pipe goes behind the cross member. So it's got the weld on, uh, Evo mounts here. We make a little bridge plate that goes right here between the upper mount and the frame. And then it has, of course, those uniballs on that upper link and then factory bushings in the housing there. We put the Artec cross member in here. That's just a 
becomes raw metal, it gets powder coated locally, and then those joints get put in there. Uh, has a mountain off-road skid plate that didn't require any modification on this project. It fit right on nice and smooth. It's got Yukon hubs with 35 spline inner and outer shafts. And that is a beautiful satin black ring and wheel from Trail Ready. That's the HD 17 wheel with a 40 13 50 17 Mickey Thompson Baja MTZ P3. Front. This is the Barnes um, one ton swap track bar bracket. It keys into that front uh, lower steering box bolt. Uh, speaking of steering box, this is the PSC Big Bore Box Hydro Assist Kit. Synergy, their new larger diameter front track bar. Uh, PSC RAM, of course, that's an inch and three quarter stroke or inch and three quarter diameter, uh, six and a half inch stroke RAM. This is the Steer Smarts bottom mount uh, drag link uh, Yeti XD. This is a one and a half inch outside DOM tie rod with just some seven eighths heim joints or seven eighths three quarter heims. So this is the first one of these we've had here. This is the Fusion fabricated 10 inch Pro Series front. This is a 71, 72 inch width axle with king pins. Um, it's got the Chevy style outers, but has their Dodge or F250. I'm not sure whose caliper that is, uh, but it's a dual piston big bore caliper. Um, this has the Gearworks high pinion 10 inch with the 543 gear and ARB locker. Uh, forged yoke 1350 and again another Knoxville driveline 1350 CB shaft um, right here you can see this pipe is new this is the AFE loop delete pipe so it, it's a it's a bolt-in pipe really fits nicely for those doing long arm setups and uh, has enough clearance on the back side of this upper mount for uh, clearance with uh, the exhaust and the suspension Currently, these are just BDX or BDS NX2 shocks. We just threw those on there to get him rolling. Uh, they were cheap and easy, have a good amount of travel. We have some smooth body King 2.5s uh, ordered for this, but like with everything right now, we are waiting 12 or more weeks for uh, special order shocks. You can see underneath the bumper here, that is a, the cooler, the Fend PSC in and out cooler. The bumper above that is the Genrite Ultra Clearance aluminum bumper with the Xeon 10S winch with synthetic rope, has our fair lead and the Factor 55 Pro Link. He put the bumper and winch and all that stuff on himself as well as that supercharger. So it's got a used rip supercharger he bought off a of marketplace from another friend and customer. Uh, he put the ACE inner fenders in himself at home. Uh, again, four and a half inch cools. Gives this thing tons of clearance. Uh, this is the first time it's been on its weight. Um, just got it done with the alignment. Getting ready to go test drive it and do some, hopefully some shakedown this weekend. We'll have some video following this walk around. There's another image of the long arm setup and the high pinion front end. Look at that drive shaft. I mean, it's, you can almost, I mean, it's not even visible. Uh, it's way tucked up there. Uh, tons of clearance. Of course, the gas tanks always come out on these uh, to get all the brackets cut off cleanly and weld the new ones on and get painted up nice. And here you can see that third leg that was added from where the other one was removed from back here that wouldn't fit with that long arm setup. But man, this is a beautiful Jeep. Uh, you can follow Jason on Instagram. It should be like Mad Max JKU, I believe. I'll post a link up so you can follow him. Hopefully he'll be showing you some more off-road adventures and build walk around and build additions to his Jeep as he goes along. But it's really a tough Jeep. It's got that slant back twill, best top, super top NX glide. 
sits a little bit tall in the rear right now because he doesn't have a tire carrier or his spare. He did purchase a matching tire and wheel. Um, so he does have a spare there. But yeah, we're going to get this thing on the ground. Uh, we'll show you it driving around a little bit and then maybe some uh, shakedown of it this weekend. Stay tuned. Moving on under the hood, uh, this has got the RIP supercharger that he picked up secondhand. He installed that at home. Uh, it's a little bit of a chore to get that new power steering pump on there. It's uh, tucked way down in there. You can't really see. Um, but, you know, if you've ever done a belt with one of these with a RIP charger, it's a little more time consuming. Um, but relocated uh, that catch can, relocated the or installed the anti-splash valve here that's his reservoir for his hydro assist he put a quality north star battery in here and then uh, back here this is the circuit breaker for the circuit going in to the rear and i don't know if you can see that this is a moto built bracket that holds that fuse block or that uh, circuit breaker which is a pretty cool little yeah, a little $13 gadget, uh, but it makes uh, mounting the circuit breaker pretty clean. It makes it bolt on. Um, over here on the other side, uh, where the compressor used to be, uh, is now relocated in the rear. We'll go back there and look at that. It's also got the Mopar Big Booster Master Cylinder Kit. So it keeps good brakes with the, the big bore of the uh, these new calipers. This is the S-Pod uh, mount that he already had. And then we added the a vacuum pump relocation kit to that s-pod mount so now instead of having the black bracket that came with the s-pod that extended out here this is the metal clip bracket and mounted underneath uh, in the middle here is the vacuum pump that used to be under the front bumper so that was relocated but that's about it for under the hood we'll go back and look at the compressor mounting in the rear so in the rear, um, Jesse was able to recycle that metal cloak mount for under the hood and was able to mount the compressor in the rear and just piggybacked that uh, manifold off of the compressor. So there you can see the lines looping up on the top coming into the solenoids. Uh, they're mounted back to back uh, on that reservoir. So that thing's kind of tucked up out of the way on the side. Uh, still has room for a basket if he wants to add that. But uh, this is a super clean Jeep. I mean, he takes really good care of this thing, and uh, I'm, I'm anxious to see um, how it does on the trail, and uh, he'll always keep it in good so shape. Right here you can see on the 14 bolt how the brake lines get relocated. You know, the, the line used to come back on a JK back here and then loop down and attached right here. Uh, so that gets moved forward because the calipers are on the front side. Uh, so that, that's one good thing about this 14 bolt is the calipers are tucked up tucked up out of the way there. How does that happen? <laughs> <laughs> what? Did you leave the key on for three days straight? Negative. Okay. It's the curse of rock your four by four. Go for it.
job, buddy. Good job. Buddy! <laughs> 